the biggest part for me was my journey is I was a left-handed hitting catcher. So all I kept hearing was, oh, left-handed hitting catcher, quickest way to the big leagues, good defensive catcher, bats left-handed, just got to hit a little bit. And then, well, I, best, I guess I didn't hit a little bit. I just hit a tiny bit. <laughs> but I got there. <laughs> and the turning point for me for sure was um, 1990. I played in Class A West Palm Beach. It was the Florida State League. My manager with the West Palm Beach Expos was Felipe Alou. And to this day, I don't know why or how he was named manager of that club, but it changed my life because I was a catcher on that team and Felipe loved having me behind the plate. He always talked about me controlling the game and handling the pitching staff and that I was like another coach or manager out on that field. So I had him in my court, which was, which was huge. Um, had a decent, really good defensive year that year, offensively, same as usual, just whatever. But he loved me behind the plate. Well, wouldn't you know it, three years later, fast forward, and Felipe's the manager of the Montreal Expos, and I get the call from AAA Ottawa. And it obviously had a lot to do with my history with Felipe. He knew me very well by this time, knew what I could do, knew that he could throw me behind the plate in a tie game in the ninth inning in an NL pennant race if he wanted. And it happened. I got called up, and he's the manager of the National League style back then, now that we have a DH in the National League starting this year. But... We go back and there are a lot of double switches and he loved having me in there defensively. Darren Fletcher was the number one catcher. Oftentimes late in the game, they have to pinch run for him if it was close and then I'd go into catch. So that happened a fair bit. So Felipe Alou to this day, it, it changed my life. And um, I, of course I can give myself a little credit but because I could catch. That's why I got to the big leagues. But you know, a lot of times you need a break. And I think my break was that Felipe Alou is the manager because it could have been somebody else that, sure, they may have liked me as a catcher, but maybe didn't see me as that important or as that integral to possibly their success in, in behind the plate. Got the opportunity, and, you know, you look back now, parts of four seasons in the major leagues. I got back there a few more times, which was wonderful. Couldn't really stick, and uh, most minor leaguers will tell you that the most, um, most difficult thing to do is to get to the big leagues, but even more difficult thing then is to stay there, and that's what I learned. But uh, I certainly loved my four trips and um, again, gets, that's what given me the opportunity to now uh, pursue this profession in broadcasting. Well, it's a very small uh, group of people that end up making it to the major leagues. We actually have a clip, Joe, from when you were called up to the big club uh, with uh, manager Felipe, hello. Vic, can you play that? All of our goals to get to the big leagues, and uh, it's finally happened. Now, uh, <laughs> hopefully, I can get some playing time in and uh, contribute in any way I can and be here for a long time. To do this, you know, you, you do a lot of you know, without, without turn. turn. And there's Felipe. And how much <laughs> did you learn from him, right? <laughs> well, he, he was talking hitting there with our hitting coach, Tommy Harper. Poor Tommy you've spent hours with me in the cage. Don't know how much of it paid off, but Felipe was. Um, you know what, what I learned a lot from Felipe was more about all of the intricacies of the game, the minutia of the game, things I love to talk about right now in our broadcast in providing insight and analyzing a game. I'll never forget to this day, and I've used this on the air, Felipe, we're in a spring training game, and I was catching in the big league game, and there was a hitter up for the Dodgers, and we bounced two breaking balls in a row, kind of in the dirt, and he chased them both. Counts 0-2. I thought, of course, I'm going to change it up, maybe go elevate a fastball or try to come in. And then I was thinking going back to that breaking ball. So I called the fastball in and my pitcher left it right down the middle of the plate and he wrapped it off the right oh. center field wall for a double. So when I came in, Felipe gave me, oh, he sat me down and he told me clearly when a hitter looks that bad on the same pitch twice, back to back, throw it again. Don't try to be tricky. He's clearly shown you that he's, he's not seeing it well. He's not picking it up well throw it again. And I tell you, Joe, to this day, I have never forgotten it. The rest of my career, I never forgot it. And he was right. More times than not. And I'll, I guarantee you this year during the season, I'm going to bring this story up because somebody's going to bounce a couple breaking balls and then the pitcher's going to try to get tricky uh -huh. and slide a fastball by him and get burned. Throw it again. 